the seated or the lying leg curl? Which is the better choice? It turns out we have a study directly comparing the two and measuring muscle growth. Which one is the smarter choice? Welcome back, Dr. Michael Wolf with Wolf Coaching. Broken sign, unfortunately, but we will make up for it with some top tier information. Yet again, bringing you the latest evidence on which exercises are best to build muscle. And today we're comparing the seated versus the lying leg curl, which is the better exercise for hypertrophy. First up, my bias. Lying leg curls crush my junk. Seated leg curls, I also have a love-hate relationship with. I've gotten stuck in a seated leg curl machine more times than I can count. And so I don't like leg curls. So if I'm gonna do one of them, it may as well be the more effective one. Let's pick our poison. What makes the leg curl unique compared to most hamstring exercises? Well, most hamstring exercises people do are hip hinges, stuff like Romanian deadlifts, good mornings, traditional deadlifts, or even back extensions. All of these movements do train the hamstrings, but they also involve other muscle groups, like the glutes, like the adductors, other hip extensor muscles. Additionally, hip hinge movements necessarily involve your lower back as well. So there are many things that could potentially give out first before your hamstrings do, making it less likely that the hamstrings are the limiting factor and are being trained as close to failure as possible during these movements. In addition, because hip hinges involve a lot of different muscle groups, they're closer to a multi-joint or compound movement than most leg curl movements, which means that they generally don't work as well in higher rep ranges. And so while hip hinges like RDLs, good mornings, deadlifts, back extensions, are all great when it comes to training a lot of muscle groups at once, and they may not be quite as good at hitting the hamstrings specifically than leg curls. In addition, here's a little known fact. The hamstrings have four heads, just like the quadriceps, although a recent study actually found that they might have five heads. Anyways, the hamstrings have four heads, three of them do hip extension, so any sort of hip hinge will train those very effectively. But the fourth one, the biceps femoris short head, only does knee flexion, which means that if you want to maximize lower body growth, you almost certainly need to include some sort of leg curl variation in your program at some point, much to my dismay. Another cool fun fact about leg curls is that they probably train your calves somewhat. So if you're on team no calves or skip calf day or whatever you want to call it, leg curls probably train your gastrocnemius muscle, one of your calf muscles as well. The gastrocnemius muscle crosses the knee joint and is also responsible for knee flexion which is the joint function that you do during leg curls. And so leg curls both target all of your hamstrings at once. All four heads are responsible for knee flexion, including that fourth head that we don't train during hip hinges, and also might give you some calf stimulus. And for those of us who don't want to do calf raises, shout out Omar Isuf, that's good news. All right, without further ado, let's delve into two studies on hamstring growth that'll tell us which of the hamstring curl variations is better for hypertrophy? First, we have an unpublished study by Mayo and colleagues, the same research group that was responsible for a couple of the studies in range of motion by and large. One on the pushdown versus overhead extension, and one on the seated versus lying leg curl. Before we get to that second study, let me break down this new unpublished study. This study has only been presented at a conference, but I've been in touch with the authors personally and was able to get some details. On the multi-hip machine, they compared two groups. In one group, they performed a hip hinge style motion, keeping your knees relatively extended as you would during any sort of hip hinge for the hamstrings, with a full range of motion on the multi-hip, versus with a length and partial, or just doing the stretched half of the movement. So in one group, they were doing relatively full range of motion hip hinging, and in the other group, they were doing length and partials, or only the stretched half of the hip hinge. And using MRI, which is one of the best methods to assess muscle hypertrophy, they measured growth of the biceps femoris' long head, the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, and the gluteus maximus. And to make a long story short, they observed around twice as much hypertrophy in the group doing length and partials compared to the group doing a full range of motion. And this makes sense in light of a ton of other research. I'm gonna turn this into another length and partial video. Just stop. Just stop it. Stop, no. Just stop it. There's a lot of research out there suggesting that training at lower muscle lengths is good for hypertrophy. Enjoy. Before we go into the second study by my own colleagues, let me give you some quick anatomy on the hamstrings so that you can understand the results a little bit better. All right, lads, you see the hamstrings here. There's four heads, as I mentioned earlier. Three of them do hip extension. And so when your hips are flexed, as they would be during a seated leg curl, those three heads are more stretched out. Whereas the fourth head I mentioned earlier, the biceps femoris' short head, doesn't get impacted by hip positioning. So seated leg curl or lying leg curl shouldn't make a difference. However, it turns out that there are at least three other knee flexor muscles that get involved during the leg curl. Those are the gastroc, as I mentioned earlier, but also the sartorius and the gracilis. The sartorius, as you can see here, 
is a knee flexor, but is also a hip flexor, which means that when your hips are extended, as they would be during a lying leg curl, it is more lengthened than when your hips are flexed, as they would be during a seated leg curl. And finally, we have the gracilis muscle here, which is neither a hip flexor or a hip extensor, but it is a hip adductor. And because neither the seated nor lying leg curl really has your hips more adducted or abducted, the gracilis hypertrophy shouldn't be impacted. That is anatomy 101. Let's put this back up. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is, according to the muscle length research, we would expect to see greater hypertrophy in the hamstrings, minus the biceps femoris, as a short head, in the seated leg curl versus the lying leg curl because they're more stretched out. Conversely though, because the sartorius is a hip flexor, we should see more hypertrophy in that muscle when training at lower muscle lengths in the lying leg curl. Meanwhile, for the short head of the biceps femoris and for the gracilis muscles, because they're neither hip flexors or extensors, it shouldn't really make a difference what leg curl variation we do. And that's where the second study by Maui and colleagues comes in. They compared the seated leg curl to the lying leg curl, measuring hypertrophy of the four heads of the hamstrings, the gracilis and the sartorius muscle. And based exactly on what I was just describing about hip positioning and how that can impact muscle length of different knee flexors, that is essentially what they observed. The seated leg curl resulted in more growth in the three muscle groups that were being more lengthened. The biceps femoris is long head, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. Conversely, the sartorius saw more growth when being trained with a lying leg curl, as we expect based on being trained at lower muscle lengths. Meanwhile, just as we'd expect as well, the gracilis muscle and the biceps femoris' short head, neither of which could impact it by hip flexion or extension, saw essentially the same growth in a lying leg curl versus the seated leg curl. And so that brings us to a few takeaways. First, if your goal is hamstring growth, a seated leg curl is almost certainly better than a lying leg curl. And that is because it's training three heads of the hamstrings at lower muscle lengths. Additionally, you can probably stimulate even more hypertrophy in these muscles by leaning forward a little bit in the seated leg curl to further increase the stretch on those three heads. So when it specifically comes to hamstring hypertrophy, the seated leg curl is just better than a lying leg curl. However, because the lying leg curl did grow the sartorius a bit more, there is still a place for this exercise. Specifically, as far as your leg curls go, I would probably do seated leg curls like 70 to 90% of the time, and then the remaining 10 to 30% of the time, do the lying leg curl to get any potential sartorius hypertrophy you otherwise would miss out on. Additionally, this research also tells us that you should be doing your hip hinges. Are hip hinges essential for hamstring growth? No but they are a great option for training the hamstrings at long muscle lengths, especially with partials potentially, as I illustrated earlier with that first study. And they also train your gluteus maximus at long muscle lengths and your adductor magnus at long muscle lengths. So with hip hinge movements like the Romanian deadlift and the good morning, just happen to train most of your hip extensors at pretty long muscle lengths all at once. And finally, if you're a strong freak and you want to experiment with a crazy exercise, try the Nordic curl. While the Nordic curl is super difficult and most people won't be able to do it, and the biarticular hamstrings aren't being stretched out quite as much as they would be during a seated leg curl, but the resistance curve is extremely length and biased. So if you can do at least five good reps on a Nordic curl, they might be worth including every now and then. The strong freaks may indeed want to get onto the Nordic curl. I predict a GameStop stock-like ascension to the top. That is the video, no sign, but still giving you science. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Now I hear you saying, I don't want to be worrying about what leg curl variation to do. How about an app that I can have on my phone that tells me what leg curl variation to do for what rep range and when? Well, I got you. We have an app being released in the next few months that will take care of all of your training for hypertrophy based on your lifestyle, your goals, what muscle groups you want to specialize on. It ranks exercises for you based on the latest science. It does all of that for you. And it's releasing pretty soon. It'll cost a fraction of most online coaches. So if you'd like to be notified when it does come out and lock in at a lower price than you'd otherwise ever be able to, check out myodap.com to sign up. In the meantime, if you want me to coach you or have a consultation, check out the link above. If you want some drip, just like this, and this is a new discount code, check out Rascal Apparel. On a serious note, their clothing is actually my favorite as far as design, durability, and just comfort during training goes. So if you like what you're seeing, go check it out and use code WOLF at checkout for 10% off. And now that all of my shilling for the video is done, now that all of the science is done, go ahead, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time. Peace.